If someone were to ask me, Jeremy, what's the most important thing I should know about trunking? This is exactly what I would say. Trunking allows you to carry multiple VLANs between devices. So to really understand trunking, you need to make sure that you have an, a foundation understanding of VLANs. VLANs allow you to separate your network into multiple subnetworks. That is, a VLAN equals a subnet. And a lot of people uh, miss that correlation. VLAN is the layer two concept, meaning down at the switching layer, that we can use to segment our networks into multiple broadcast domains. And anytime you do that, essentially you've introduced a router or a routed network in the middle. And that's why VLANs equaling a subnet is a logical concept that we can tie together where we link the layer two concept with the layer three. Now, if we could only do VLANs on one device, that would be a major problem. It would be a major scalability limit. So what we do is enable trunking, which is actually a Cisco word, uh, on all of these links between switches. Now, does that mean that our, our VLANs only go between Cisco switches? No, it does not. That's because trunking is an industry standard thing. And that's why everybody else in the world calls trunking tagging. And I actually like that a little bit better than the trunking word. See, Cisco was first to the game when they came out with this ISL trunking, ISL, inner switch link trunking. And this was the ability to run VLANs between Cisco switches. But obviously the industry is going to catch up. You have HP, you have Force 10, you have all of these other switch vendors that are, Juniper, you know, all the other ones that I can't think of right now, but for good reason, uh, they, they all caught up and eventually the industry said, we need an industry standard 802.1Q trunking protocol. And that is now replaced ISL 100%. So now with 802.1Q, you have a language where as traffic moves from your devices, let's just say we have a client down here that joins the wireless access point. He joins the public SSID, right? And you've configured your wireless access points to tag the public. Whenever somebody joins the public, they're gonna be tagged with VLAN 10, let's just say. As soon as that comes into the switch and exits the link to access other devices, if it's public, probably you've limited just to the internet, right? It's going to get a little tag right on the front of that packet that says this belongs to VLAN 10. Now, it is right on the front and that means that all of the devices that do not understand VLANs will not be able to process that packet. They're gonna look at it and say, ah, there's bad data in here. So all of your switches have to be configured to support that 802.1Q tagging or trunking method, right? So that's what a trunk does, allow you to carry that tag traffic from device to device. And if you're using a router on a stick design, which is a router that's configured to process multiple VLANs using sub interfaces, right? You'll actually have an 802.1Q trunk configured between switch and router as well. And that's a very common design in small and even in a lot of mid-sized businesses because routers have continued to get faster and faster uh, connections. And for the internet, it works just fine, right? So. So that is, when I say the real trunking protocol, I'm not going dramatic, I'm just trying to say there is one and only one that is supported 802.1Q by the world today. Now, mind you, I brought a, a server into this picture because it's not just switches that support trunking. You can do a trunk to a server. And that means that server is probably doing virtualization, that is VMware, Hyper-V, those kinds of things, where you can actually create virtual machines and put them on different VLANs, even though they're running on the same device. Same thing here, when you look at a uh, IP phone, the IP phone can actually have a computer daisy chain from it, and you can run, I'll call it a mini trunk. Cisco wouldn't agree with me. They'd say, no, it's a voice VLAN. It's a mini trunk. It's a trunk that's throttled just to allow uh, the voice VLAN to be the tagged VLAN. So as it comes into the phone, the phone's like, ah, I understand that because it can read 802.1Q tags because phones are smart and that's what they're designed to do. The untagged traffic comes from the computer. So it's kind of like this very little trunk that runs to the phone. That is all done with the industry standard 802.1Q. The fake trunking protocol, some of you might remember, is actually called VTP. Cisco created this, they called it, unfortunately, the VLAN trunking protocol. 
How confusing is that? It should have been called the VLAN replication protocol because what it does is replicate VLANs between switches. So, so take a look right here. Let me, let me just clear all this off. I'll put VTP. It's the fake trunking protocol, right? As you create VLAN 10, 20, and 30, or whatever VLANs you want to create on those switches, uh, instead of having to add them here and add them here and add them here, VTP can just go and replicate it, and this is where it gets its name, over trunk links. So if you have this configured as what kind of trunk? 802.1Q trunk, right? If that is configured as a real trunk, then the fake trunking protocol, VTP, can actually replicate the VLAN so they automatically show up on the switches down below. Now, that doesn't mean the ports automatically get assigned to the, to the uh, VLANs. That's still your and I's job, right? We have to have some work that we do. So we have to go down to the switch and assign the ports, but we do not have to create the VLANs if we're using the fake trunking protocol called VTP because it's not a trunking protocol at all. It's a replication protocol that works over trunk links, right? Last thing the dynamic trunking protocol, this guy right here. DTP is another Cisco creation that was designed to make things easy, but in the end made things kind of hard. And that is at least for you and I to remember. DTP allows the switches to negotiate and configure trunks on their own, right? Switches can recognize switches if you're using DTP and that, that allows them to say, hey, I'd like to be a trunk because DTP has two major modes, auto and desirable, right? I'll just put auto and desire. Auto mode sits there and passively waits for somebody to try and be a trunk. So, so if you had all your switch ports, let's just say all these switch ports were in auto mode, it would just be like, hey, I could be a trunk. I could, it's kind of like, if you wanna, I'll do it, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna push the issue, right? If you're not gonna wanna be a trunk, if you're not going to want to be a trunk, right? If, if you don't want to be a trunk, I won't be a trunk. And I'll just, I'll just sit there passively waiting. De passively waiting. Desirable, on the other hand, is like, I want to be a trunk. And I'm sending out DTP packets to try and negotiate. And this is why it got so complex. It's, it's like, it's such a simple thing. I just want a trunk, right? But instead, Cisco said, well, well, we'll have desirable, which will try to be a trunk. And if that hits desirable, then it'll be a trunk. If it's auto, it'll be a trunk. But if I have auto on auto, then it's not going to be a trunk because they'll both just be sitting there staring at each other. Now, a lot of people go, why did they do that? Well, they wanted to be able to set up an environment where you could just have a switch. You're like, oh, hey, let's just, let's just have this guy be all auto. And, and that way, if I decide to configure trunks down the road, then, then I can. Because here's a little known fact. A lot of people get this one wrong. There's also technically trunking mode. That is, you go into the interface and you say switch port mode trunk, right? A lot of people say that's hard coding your trunk. And it is. But trunk mode, essentially hard coding the trunk, also sends out DTP messages. So if this guy is auto or is a desirable or he's hard coded as a trunk, it all works. They'll all become trunks if this guy is configured as a trunk. And that's what Cisco wanted. They wanted this easy to, to, to run thing. The challenge is, I mean, when they came out with DTP, it was just like, man, that's a great idea. What a great idea. And then security caught up to them and people were like, you know what? If somebody gets a trunk link and they don't, belong there, they can do something called a VLAN hopping attack. Very bad thing where they can jump between different VLANs and immediately all the recommendations were like, do not use DTP, hard code your trunks, never use desirable auto, just, just turn that all off, right? Set your access ports to be access ports and your trunk ports to be trunk ports. So at that point, DTP and all of Cisco's best intentions with that got a bad rap. So just like I mentioned, if somebody asked me what's the most important stuff to know about trunking, that would be it. We have done a flyover of trunking, trunking protocols, VTP, and DTP to get us ready for the configuration and troubleshooting of trunking. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.